idiots, including myself. And if you haven't yet, um, if you could. Yeah, there you go, Craig. You're being better than me and faster than me. And I'm, I'm loving Joseph the OKD4 GA. It's the most hopeful shirt I've seen all day. Um, so thank you for that. And um, we'll figure out getting a Panda, <laughs> OG Panda logo on that T-shirt. And when we go GA, I'll at least get some stickers printed from the, the OSPO <laughs> team. We'll get them the ante up and print us some new stickers. So... <laughs> Um, welcome everybody and welcome back from vacation, uh, Christian. Uh, Thanks. Your, Hi the everybody. Map, the map behind your head, is that where you went on vacation? Um, actually, yeah, that's, I didn't go too far on vacation actually. So I live right here in Hamburg and I went up, up to the coast of the North Sea, um, for a week. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. I, I, my furthest trip so far has been from um, a ferry ride over to Vancouver and back. So um, I'm I'm totally jealous that you got a real vacation in. Well played. So um, I'm going to share my screen and um, we're going to put the um, Craig put the list in there. If you can add your name to that, and we're going to drive through today and um, see what we're doing. I'll share my whole screen here because why not? I think I have a clean thing. Um, yeah. yeah, there's still some stuff. So first, why don't we kick it off um, with the OKD4 update from Vadim and Christian. Where are we at? All right, I think I'll sure. um, leave this one to Vadim as I wasn't here last week. Oh, OK. Um, so yesterday we released beta 5. Um, I don't think it has any, wait, uh, it has all the fixes merged to run a single master install. You would need a beefy machine for that, like 16 gigabytes of RAM. Um, and you still need a bootstrap node. But other than that, I give it a try on a few platforms and it seems to work. So I would appreciate some tests. You won't be able to upgrade. And you won't be able to make host modifications using MCO. Uh, but other than that, it's fully functional. Um, more changes in beta 5. Um, there's been there's been just mostly a collection of, of fixes merged. And I think my connection is dropped. And you can't hear me anymore, right? No, we can hear you. You're you're good. Okay. You're still good. Just, so I, I just seen the, the screen froze and I was not sure was it my laptop or is it <coughs> uh good. So for um other news. Um we're working on rebasing OKD on four dot five code base, meaning um you would get a vSphere API and more changes from which we're cooking in 4.5. Um, and we're hoping we would be able to use upstream MCO thanks to work from Christian. Um, and we would use Fedora 32 um, as a basis, meaning um, new kernel and more shiny stuff from Fedora project. Uh, that's pretty much it, I have created a milestone to track this um, better because we're not sure if we'll be able to release it next Monday. And I've created a milestone to track the official GA release so that the t-shirt would be true. Um, there is still quite a, quite a few large things to tackle on the way, um, but I'm pretty sure in a few weeks, we would be able to have at least the approach to that and would be able to finally go G. Um, that's all I've got. Okay. So I I saw a few things in the OpenShift-Dev. A few people had been testing, I believe, um, but I don't think we've gotten any feedback yet. So that I think is, is there anyone in this call that's, that's tried deploying the, the, beta, the beta 5? 
silence. Silence is golden some days. It's it's pretty you mean, you mean the OKD beta five four point five? Yep, thank you. The OKD beta five is what I think what we're officially calling it beta five. No one's done that yet, so yeah. So there'll be some work over the weekend on your home labs and everything else everywhere else. So um, give it a workout. Um, so hopefully we will get that done. Um, Joseph has helped hugely um, getting the OKD.io um, landing page um, up to snuff. Um, apparently there's a few more broken links or links that you're questionable about. Um, did you, I didn't see any PR requests on that. I think you were hesitating about where to point them. And, and I'm looking in the chat and not miss you a couple of dead links, or at least very old links, yes, probably. Um, so if you point them out to me, I'll, I'll either remove them or um, find a more relevant one. And hopefully we'll get there. He's also been working on updating the um, logo for, so it has a an actual four on the hamlet on the side. So. Um, Stay tuned for um, a new OKD Panda image to, to go out with four, hopefully. Um, but that's good, so cool. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, CRC. Um, Char is Charo on the call? I don't see him. Is any update on um, the single node installer? Has anyone else besides Charo tried it out? I don't see Charo this time, so yeah, I guess not. All right, and I'm going to stop sharing for a minute because um, my screen's going a little wonky. Um, there was some talk of using GPUs in OKD4. Um, is that an update that we should get today, Vadim, or is that um, for a future topic? Uh, that's something for the future. I should contact Zvonko again. Because of their schedules, we probably lost them. Okay. So the only other thing that I have is we we moved um, Yes, uh, yesterday we were supposed to do an, an OKD working group AMA session uh, on, and we've moved it to I think June 1st, next Monday, um, as part of the briefing series that I do at, um, I guess it's 1600 UTC or 1700, 1600 UTC, just the hour before this, and I'll send a note out if people want to join that, um, just to try and drive some more interest in um, and OKD4 and answer any questions that are out there. Um, there have been a lot of questions that I've been noticing and people participating in the Kubernetes OpenShift dev channel um, from a number of different spaces. So there seems to be quite a few people who are testing and working with OKD4, um, but not participating in the working group. So I'd like to, to get some of those folks um, enrolled and engaged in the community conversations here. So I want to open it up now um, if people have other things that they want to talk about today. Um, that's what I had on my, my list of things that I should make sure I check off today. Awful quiet here. Let's see what's going on in the uh, chat. Gladeson here. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. It's working fine? Yep. Cool, cool. Um, I just wanted to share that for the past weekend, I've been testing uh, OKD on vSphere, trying to use IPI, uh, not UPI, and um, I haven't been successful. The, the Fedora machine that I got from the beta 4.4 is not uh, booting up. I get some, some uh, weird error on, on the kernel during the initialization. And uh, doing some investigation, I realized that there are a few uh, uh, Bugzilla is opened for, uh, for uh, uh, I think it's a for CoreOS actually, CoreOS issues, not uh, uh, Fedora issues per se. 
So uh, I just read in the chat that uh, IPI might come off in 4.5. Is there a specific uh, place I should look for uh, nightlies in order to test IPI? We don't have nightlies based on 4.5 yet. Um, but we could create, uh, rather, I could share a testing build I'm using before we sort out the branches and the the commits we want to use because we would have to configure additional CI configuration. Uh, we would need some more things on the infra to make those work and have it tested for vSphere because that, that's apparently a, a huge platform. So we should test it better than we used to do. Uh, assembling official nightlies would take some time, but we could share something we have right now. Um, and hopefully that will work. If it won't, and we would find a problem in Fedora OS, we would have to wait for official nightly so that we could have something to share with our engineers. And that would be something more complex than just some random things I built over the weekend. Um, but yes, giving it a, a, a preview for the for the nightly, Definitely possible, yes. Joseph is um, asking, does it make sense to list the PRs that are necessary for GA so we can count them down? So um, I'd say that there's still two things here. Um, so we want to get everything merged into master, but for the 4.5 um, release timeframe, we will still be building off of a branch. Um, so I think the more important ones are getting that into master, uh, but on the other hand, that doesn't necessarily block uh, GA. We just really want to get, um, yeah, the, the certainty that it's eventually going to merge before we call it a GA. Um, so it's, yeah, it's only, well, actually, uh, Vadim made a good, a great list of, of things we still have to get done before GA um, on the OKD repository, like a tracker bug. I think that's probably the best place to track this. Um, yeah, there's going to be individual PRs. Um, not all of them are open yet, so yeah. Can you um, share the link to where that is? Where Vadi made that um, now, or maybe just share your screen and share the link too at the same time so we can see that. I'm always, there's so many places, too many places. Yeah, one second, I'll, I'll just um, send the link. So it's essentially, essentially two issues on the OKD repository. This one's for MCO, and the second one is for the installer. And this one is the installer. And what we also want to get done before GA is replacing all the ironic images with RDO. Uh, yeah, with RDO sources. So, and, and we'll probably have to have builds of these containers in in OpenShift CI as well in Pro. Uh, RDO is the uh, well, the upstream for the Red Hat OpenStack. Fact, would yeah. So it's an OpenStack distribution, and that's what we used to run everything um, on the, that, that's sort of the base for the OpenShift, OpenStack platform. Cool. All right. This may be a short meeting because um, you guys aren't as talkative as you usually all are. RDO for ironic bare metal, yes. Um, so the, the only other thing besides these um, getting to GA, which is sort of the end all and be all of everything um, in my world, at least, um, 
and I'll add these four to here, is the um, KubeCon um, North America is has their call for papers out, and I would love to see uh, a talk submitted by maybe um, some of us here um, to talk about building an opinionated um, uh, Kubernetes distro. Um, there are lots of opinionated things out there, so I'm wondering if anyone's game to do to that submission. Um, it'll probably more than likely be a virtual event, but um, it'll still be um, be an interesting one. So if you're game for that, um, let me know and um, we can collaborate on it and get it in in, uh, in a timely fashion. Are Christian and Vadim searching for a new project if OKD is released? Oh no, you're not searching. There will be. No, we'll <laughs> stick around. I think, at, yeah, at least yeah. I will. Yeah, there will be. Um, I don't think we'll ever let Vadim or Christian um, off the hook on this one. Um, just because it hits GA, it's still going to keep in sync with OCP's release cycles and the new features and functions. So. This, this project is going to be ongoing on, um, no, Vadim for CEO, I, 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 unfortunately, Paul got the role, but, um, you know, there's always a possibility that Paul Cormier will retire and we can, you know, put Vadim up for CEO. So that You don't want me in the CEO. I don't know. It would be cool. CEO in my world is a cluster to the operator and I, and I stick to that. Yes. There you go. Um, all right, so uh, anyone else got stuff that we, we need to, to get done today? I, I know this, this is sh shockingly um, quick for a, an OKD meeting. I can't believe it must be. Is Neil not on? You know. No, I don't want to cut you off at the, at the hip, but if anyone wants to, um, to work on uh, the a draft of a call for papers for KubeCon, um, just reach out to me and um, I will help craft it and hopefully get it um, get it accepted um, and, and we can go on and we might actually, I've been trying to get a, um, a white paper done um, sort of categorizing Kubernetes distributions with a couple of other folks so um, I'm looking to see um, about getting some more visibility for OKD out there in the world once it's GA. So anyone else? And there is always that nebulous Fedora Magazine article that never seems to get writ written either with our all of our spare time. So um, that could be another task coming, coming forward. So with that, I, I can't believe you guys are this quiet today. Um, and we're I, I can answer. I can answer a question Joseph brought up earlier, just to add more conversation here. <laughs> uh, so, Joseph, you had asked about uh, if the autoscaler would work with vSphere once we got everything together. So, just as a as a blanket a statement, in OpenShift, the cluster autoscaler uses our version of cluster API, which we call machine API. So, anything that the machine API operator is able to control, so vSphere, AWS, any of those providers we have, the cluster autoscaler actually speaks to the machine API. So the autoscaler, you know, it can do anything that the machine API providers can do. So any provider that is available through the machine API, the autoscaler should be able to scale it. Also in, also in version 4.4? Yes, yeah. Ah, okay. Okay, we didn't try that out. Um, okay, didn't know that. Thank you. Yeah, if you if you look at the way we deploy the cluster autoscaler, we're using um, in four. This should be in four point four. We use a provider called OpenShift Machine API. That's the name for the provider we give, and that you know, so the autoscaler is just creating like machine sets and machine deployments. Um, it's modifying those, so it's not actually speaking directly to the provider. The machine API is speaking to the provider. So any any provider implementation we have that would work through IPI or through UPI, I suppose, any provider implementation that machine API can talk to, cluster autoscaler should work with those providers. You know, there might be there might be some minor feature gaps, but 
the general behavior of scale up, scale down, you should be able to do. Okay, we'll try that um, out maybe tomorrow. Good to hear. Uh, Gleiton here again. Uh, do we need to do anything special to get the uh, autoscaler working, or is it set up as part of the installation? You need to. So there's two different types of resources that you want to be aware of. One is called the cluster autoscaler resource, and the other one are called machine autoscaler resource. A cluster autoscaler resource, there should only be one of them, and you create that to tell OpenShift to make you the autoscaler. So it will start the autoscaler operator, or the autoscaler, yeah, operator at that, or process. I guess it's just a controller, really. So you create a cluster autoscaler, and this is all documented. That will launch the, um, the autoscaler. And then you create machine autoscaler resources to associate a machine set with the autoscaler. So if you have a bunch of machine sets, you need to create a machine autoscaler to tell the cluster autoscaler to watch that machine set. And then you can set kind of the upper and lower bounds on you know, how much it should scale up or scale down, basically. You get a link to the documentation on that, and is that something that we should create a short video on or something? Um, um, yeah, let me. Yeah, I can grab the upstream documentation and link to it. And we have we have an FAQ in, of some of this stuff. Let me let me take a minute here to grab a couple docs. Yeah, if you can if you can do that, that would be great. Um, I have one more thing because there's always one more thing, and just when you think you're going to get off early. Um, I did a talk the other day with um, Albin Cricky from um, Kinfolk IO and the folks who have Flatcar, along with a whole lot of Inspector Gadget and other kind of cool tooling and things. Um, and I was curious if anyone had looked at Flatcar at all in terms of OKD4 um, and what what this if that was a possibility of something um, to collaborate with them on. Um, Has anyone even heard of Flatcar? Okay. Um, Flatcar is basically a, a continuation of Container Linux. Mm -hmm. Literally rebuilt Container Linux. It has Ignition. Um, is it Ignition 3 or is it still 2? I'm not entirely sure. If they have Ignition 3, then we should be ready to go. Uh, that would be an interesting experiment, in fact. Uh, we should have some kind of a board uh, for these kind of experiments we want to do with OKD. Yeah. Well, I they... have, like, five things I would love to play with, starting with GPUs and replacing the Fedora Core with, some, with something different, but um, there is no place for, for us to coordinate in those efforts. We could add a column in, on the um, community board, um, and and they weren't they weren't thinking about it. It was just something um, came up in a conversation. So, and I don't I haven't heard of anybody who wants it. Um, so, it's yeah, it looks like it's spec three. But I'm just I'd be curious. So maybe on the community board, um, we have a column of areas for experimentation, um, and just to keep track of that in case that. So we can add something there. Um, so thanks, that, that was great, and thank you for those. Uh, do we need to do a little um, demo um, on um, on doing this um, auto scaling stuff? It sounds like it's something that um, people are asking a lot of questions about. I just, I could certainly do a demo next week on it. I mean, I I probably would just use OCP because that's what I'm using right now, but like it works the same on OPD. Let me just see if I can, um, we don't have a meeting next week, so done. I'm just looking at my calendar next week, maybe even just do a little briefing on it, and give me two seconds to get there. Uh, something to, to add to the conversations that a lot of the traffic we see in the OpenShift dev channel on, on the Kubernetes Slack is that uh, most of the people that are trying OKT, they went through the the user provided uh, infrastructure side. So if if you would be able to uh, use in your demo, you know, examples from user provided, that would be very helpful for the community. 
All right, I, I'll take some time to see if I can get OKD up and running. If if I can use vSphere, um, I will. But I, you know, I don't have a vSphere account right now, so the main things available to me are like AWS and GCP are what I work on most of the time. Um, so if I can just do like an OKD install to AWS, um, that would probably be the easiest for me. Um, but the mechanics of what I'm going to show, they won't. It won't matter whether it's running on vSphere or AWS or GCP because none of those details will bubble into the things that I'm going to. I'm just going to be using the resources that you know the operators look for, basically. So how about um, because I have I have a slot on Wednesday the third of June, um, at my nine a.m. I think you're you're East Coast, aren't you? Noon. Um, I actually think I because this is a reoccurring thing. People asking this question. That if you're asking in the working group, I'm sure there's people out there asking as well. So um, it might be. Let's let's aim for that. Um, the third of June, and we'll do it. It seems 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 like a good good topic. And is that um, like an is that like an OpenShift Commons or something? Or I I'm on I'm online now. Um, Four days a week, I found someone to do one of the days, Tuesdays, for me, um, doing briefings from on all, all kinds of topics by Commons members and different working groups. And Mondays, the plan is to always do an AMA with one of the upstream projects. So you guys are the guinea pig for next Monday um, at um, 9 a.m. And I've invited Vadim and Christian, and I can I'll post it on the um, the working group session too. And we can post it if we can on OpenShift Dev. And it's just, you know, I'm going to get the demon Christian to give a, a quick update on what OKD is, where we're at with the release cycle right now, and point to all the right resources. And then we'll see, you know, we may, may be the same group of people all talking to each other again. Who knows who will come, but um, I think it would be um, pretty good. And, I don't know. Maybe we do, depending on how long your autoscaler demo is, maybe we do that. I, th I was thinking I was going to try and get um, who did the um, single cluster demo too. Um, that was, was that Joseph or that was Charo? So um, from Old Dominion to see if they would join. So maybe doing a couple of little demos. I don't know how long it takes you to do an autoscaler demo and a single cluster node thing, but just. I have, I can go as long as I want on Monday. We could go two hours if we need to. Um, and maybe that's what we do on Monday is have the AMA do a quick, um, here, here you do auto scaling and here, you know, here's how you do it on a single cluster just to have things to talk about too. Um, if that sounds reasonable for folks. And then I can clip it all into the little videos that I like for my YouTube keeping. Um, and so people don't have to watch the whole two hours. And listen to me blather on in between when you guys go silent on me. So um it sounds it sounds good to me. Like so, yeah, send me uh send me some info. Um I would probably want like ten to fifteen minutes um for mine because it just getting the autoscaler working is one thing, but then to show it scaling out and scaling it back in can take it could take four or five minutes because you need to wait for the Yeah. Um yeah. but yeah, like I would probably just do that. I would show people you know, we'll we'll turn the auto scaler on. We'll make a workload and force it to scale up. We'll watch it scale up. Then we'll delete the work node and we'll watch it scale down. And you know, that should be enough. And then we could do like Q and A or whatever people. Are. Yeah. How does that sound? What is that? Matt? Could you delete the VM and vSphere in an event where people ask? Oh yeah. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a different format for for doing meetings. It's not. Yeah. bound to a an agenda like this one yeah. um and we yeah last time we had this free flow discussion um and we we thought we do need a forum for for that uh, as well and the ama i think is is very is very well suited to do that um well 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 here we should probably more focus on on the agenda and you know get get things uh, really done and the world's so just, big, biggest dog just walked behind you. Unbelievable. What is it, Irish wolfhound or something? No, he's a great Dane. <laughs> oh my God. It was like, oh, 
in Canada, we have Ogo Pogo or the Loch Ness monster just went behind. Them. It's like, what's that? Um, it, yeah, totally. So I, I just wanted to respond a little bit to some of the things that Joseph is saying here. So you, he's saying like, you want to see a machine deletion and then the auto scaler kind of fill in. Um, actually, that doesn't even take the auto scaler. The machine API will do that for you. So like as it stands currently, if you do not scale down your machine set, but you were to delete a machine, not the node, please, please don't delete nodes, that, that disrupts things. But if you delete the machine object, then the, then the machine API will actually take care of removing that and then creating a new one for you. So like the auto scaler, um, to exercise the auto scaler, we oftentimes look more at creating workload in the cluster because what the auto scaler wants to look for it doesn't look to see if the size of those groups have changed. What it looks to see is, um, are there underutilized nodes, meaning nodes that could be reaped from the cluster, and are there unscheduled pods? And if there are unscheduled pods and there's availability, it will increase the size of the cluster. Otherwise, it won't. But just doing things like deleting machines and watching it fill back in, that's actually the machine API that's doing that for you, not the autoscaler. Okay, maybe we can use a very small VMs, so you would uh, see an effect maybe faster uh, with single single pods if we deploy and delete. Right, right. Just, so what I what I will yeah. what I'll probably what I do in these situations is like I'll probably turn the auto scaler down so it only looks for like a very short time to respond, and then yeah, we make workloads that basically have such large memory requests that we can only fit one on a node. And then it's real easy to tell the auto scaler like, okay, I want to rep, you know, make 10 replicas of this workload. It should make 10 machines to fill it out. So we'll, we'll do something like that probably. Okay. Okay, great idea. All right, so I will add you to the, the call on Monday. So you'll get an invite um, and I will post a note on um, the mailing list um, with the details for that. Funnily enough, it's exactly the same number that you've dialed in for blue jeans um, here today. So um, you don't have to worry too much uh, about that, but, um, but that's that's how this whole thing works. Um, is there anything else people would like to cover off today? Yes, uh, because my idea um, of uh, the countdown page, because I don't, I, I think uh, we should not underestimate um, the importance of this GA. Uh, thing I would say because uh, yeah the time frame was so long people are waiting a lot of that mm -hmm. I, I think we should yeah we should uh, we could do something to uh, yeah make it more interesting to yeah to gain more awareness yeah. that there is something cool coming uh, in the pipeline and yeah I don't know, know if a PR counter is the right thing here or if we find something something better, but I think it's worse. Uh, yeah, if, if I can jump, jump in here. Go ahead. If I can yeah. jump in here real quick. So um, I, I would really like to set a date once we're able to do that. So I think um, we're getting very close to, to actually um, being able to, to do that, but right now it, there's a few more things that need to happen internally, the planning. Um, and then we can really commit to a date. I think we're getting close, but um, I would like to um, push that conversation out at least till next uh, meeting, and then um, sort of see where we were at at that time. Yes. And yeah, yeah. But I hope you understand. But I agree. My we point. should we should definitely make that a market. Uh, yeah, we should market that. We yeah, you know, um, yeah, definitely. Okay. Oops. Uh, because yeah. uh, because other projects celebrate every every single change log uh, entry. Yeah, remember Diane, remember the Twitter uh, talk yesterday. Yeah, uh, that that's what's top of mind for me. So I think we have a little bit of time. So maybe between getting a logo and a launch, and we can um, make this um, celebrate this in a couple of ways. It pro uh, probably go back to. Um, we, we can do a blog post about it on openshift.com. I'm happy to do that and write that up. Uh, and 
um, get get the word out that way. I don't think you're going to see Red Hat do any um, big press release or announcement about it. Um, it's going to have to be totally community driven um, because it does kind of compete with um, OCP and all of the other product offerings. So we kind of, they it kind of, we kind of play under the radar from corporate marketing. So um, it can happen. I can make that happen. Um, and then um, we'll just, I'll use my platform on OpenShift Commons briefings. We can host um, uh, an OpenShift Commons briefing announcing the GA. Um, and we can start the cadence of OKD working group AMA session. So we did an OKD4 AMA next week. So do we have, it's, it sounds to me like this is three to four weeks off um, if I'm a betting person, or is it sooner than that? Christian? Three to so four I would, weeks? I would say four to six weeks. Okay. Four to <laughs> eight weeks. Less than eight, more, more than a month, I'd say. All right. So I have time to write some articles, and I will just um, bake it in there, and, we, and um, Joseph and I have time to do that. I think the countdown is a good thing. But it's also, um, and let me not misspeak, it's it's 4.5 OCP that we're waiting for to drop. Is that correct or or is it 4.6? So yeah, we, we'll be merging all the changes in the 4.6 development time frame, which is sort of open now. Um, and then for 4.5, we will have a separate branch. So we will be basing off of the 4.5 release branch but then add a few additional commits on top of that um, to enable everything to work with Ignition Spec 3 and um, Fedora Core OS. From the 4.6 release on, it'll be built off of the same branches, um, off of the release 4.x branch, just like OCP. Um, that was our, our goal for GA, and now we've sort of um, to, to not have to wait for that, we'll be releasing GA probably off of the FCOS 4.5 branch, but we want to be sure that all the changes will then land in 4.6, so we don't regress in any way uh, from 4.5 to 4.6. Okay. Because once we go GA, we, we can't just, um, you, you know, there, there is this promise of, of stability then, so we really have to be sure that all the changes will land in that time frame we can say uh, this is GA. Okay. Wow. Well, um, that was um, good, and I'm glad I recorded that because it was complicated. Um, and yeah, no take backs on GA. And uh, yeah, try and say that in a tweet. Okay. And um, so I'm going to try. Yeah, and... all, all of this is uh, is complex and difficult and a little bit annoying at times, but um, yeah, I know. 144 we'll characters, there. yeah. So that that's, I think that's the other thing. The other thing that I was thinking about too is that maybe um, I should try and see if I could find a Twitter, um, if okd.io was a Twitter handle that I could steal um, to start um, tweeting out some stuff too. But um, let me see if I can get that done. So with all of that, Anything else we should be? There's nothing else in the chat here that I see that I missed. Is the sample operator also a blocking, uh, blocking thing? Or because I think uh, there is some progress uh, going on there? It would block the upgrade. Um, but that's a bug. Once we have one of the biggest hurdles on the way to GA is official enhancement merge. So once we get all the org to agree that, yes, we want to OKD4, yes, we want it uh, the way we have outlined and we're working on, we will be able to follow box for the samples operator. Until then, it's like semi-official and they are not like bound by this enhancement. I just lost your voice, Vadim. I don't know what that last right. bit was. So once we merge the enhancement, that would be a bug, and they will fix it in 4.6 time frame. We will be able sure. to provide a pull request. 
is there a PR for this in enhancement somewhere to follow the progress? Or... Yes, chat doesn't work for me, but I think Christian would, would be able to find it because he filed that enhancement. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just put it in the in the chat. Oh, you're muted. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I think it's it's not too far off. We just need um, buy-in from from those teams that are actually concerned with maintaining what what we propose and outline there. Um, yeah, I, I think it, it'll go through, and we'll we'll have that very soon um, to merge. And yeah, then, then we can really um, look at implementing everything. I mean, for, for most the things we have done the code already. Samples operator certainly is a thing we have to um, look at fixing actually and changing up a few things. But we need, you know, before we put in any effort there, we just need to, yeah, to clear the way to agree on a way to do this. I would very appreciate to hear in some, and not today, but in a later meeting of how the relationship between OCP and OKD is, because I always thought OKD is some yeah, something to get um, used to OCP. And if you have enough traffic on your OKD cluster, some, you can switch over to OCP, because this is a, a, a set what we plan to do. And I think uh, lots of uh, lot yeah, companies. That's do the definitely same. thing we. Yeah, that's definitely the thing we want to enable. Um, and so it's it's a sibling distribution. Uh, we've been calling it because it's it's a, it's the same code base, but then it has a different base operating system. And with the with the base operating system, there is a, a upstream downstream relationship, but it is. Um, not in the actual cluster code. So the cluster code is the same, which is why, yeah, it's a sibling distribution. And then in the future, of course, you'll be able to um, upgrade from OKD to OCP with the commands you've been using um, to upgrade from one beta to the next um, and just switch out the base image and, uh, you know, become a customer that way, definitely. Yeah. Very what do you, what do you want to say to that? There is a company which does exactly that every single day. They pick the latest nightly and try to upgrade to OCP. Um, all of those upgrades have failed so far. You're muted again. You're still muted. So you left us with all, all you're back. All of the upgrades have failed so far. Yeah, because of the ignition version and compatibility. Um, but once they would pass, I will definitely notify the work group meeting because we see those upgrades failing and passing on our uh, dashboard internally using telemetry. Uh, that's another incredibly interesting experiment to play with. And we would have to confirm with legal and support organization that your cluster would be supported after you do that. Because there is a chance that it won't be. Uh, yeah, I'm sure again, that there will be li limitations on, on the, you know, on, on the workloads we can migrate. But um, if it's, you know, if, if there's sort of a, a supported um, product or operator on the OCP side, and you do that beforehand on OKD, you'll be able to transition that workload into OCP. I mean, that I think um, legal's not going to be against that. I mean, I can't really speak to that, but it just makes sense for Red Hat, um, uh, you know, as a company. So I think that's in the pipeline, and we want to want to enable that so people can Absolutely. try out stuff on OKD and then, you know, migrate that cluster uh, to become an OCP cluster. Sure, that's a great business model. It's absolutely fantastic if that works.
All right, then I'm multitasking, as everyone can probably tell, um, and trying to update uh, a road to GA column there in the um, community page with the list of the open issues um, and links to them. So if I did, if I missed something, please add it there, Christian and Vadim. I think there's one more, but I, I'm losing the thread here today. So, All right. Anything else we should capture today? If not, ping me um, on the Kubernetes Slack if you're interested in collaborating on the submission for KubeCon um, North America, and um, we can write something up. And um, let me know, um, I'll, I'll reach out to Charles and see how long his talk on the single cluster install would be for Monday and if he's available to do that too. And Mike, oh, I will add you to the Blue Jeans um, invite so you have an official one in your inbox. All right. I'll let you all go, and you will get all of 15 minutes back in your day. Go, quick, run, test, beta 5. And um, we'll see you mostly in the Kubernetes Slack there. I think that's where we're all living these days. So take care. Thanks, Diane. Thanks, everyone. Bye.